Los Angeles friendos, join Going In Raw as we go live on stage with Wrestling With Regrets' Brian Zane, September 24th at the Nerdist Showroom in L.A. The link to tickets is in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friend, no, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw View, the show here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, where we review old pic- What are you doing? You know what? Why? I, I went Why? and got some chili today for lunch. And you have to spoon it and put it in the cup, you know? <laughs> and so I, I, I got a spoonful in my cup. Yeah. I put the spoon in there. For some reason, the angle at which the spoon hit the surface of the chili Blew splashed up. chili everywhere. Yeah. So I have chili over my shorts. I look oh like a jerk. Oh, my gosh. Do you know that's not important? You know what's important? Well, this it is morning, because it put me in a foul mood. You know how I've, uh, how I've uh, talked highly about Pluto TV? This is not an ad. This is not an ad for Pluto TV. However, I'm going to say this. This morning I flip on Pluto TV because we put the PlayStation 4 in my bedroom because Lacey wanted to play Fallout 4. Mm. And uh, I put it on Pluto TV and there's a a station that shows old cartoons from like back in the day. There's a couple of them actually, which is really cool. They have like Inspector Gadget. Ooh. They were airing one of the only 13 episodes there there, there was of Starcom. Oh, you were happy, huh? I was stunned. I had no idea anybody would even know about this show to, to pick up the license for it. That's insane. What does that, be super what does that we need do with a, me getting chilly on my shorts? Oh, I was just reminded of it. I was going to bring it up on the show today. We have to pad this out because th- there's not a lot to talk about. Today you I'm going to interrupt you. A, a, a thing that was all of 38 minutes long. Go, well, today, sorry. Friendo chose a thing that was all 38 minutes long. You proposed. Yeah, I know. You I, nominated. I really wanted to watch that first episode of Nitro again. Um because Why? it had Lex in the puffy shirt. I know, it's awful. Um, so today on Going In Review, we're going to talk about ECE. The first, ch- the first, very, very first episode of ECW. You can't say it like that. I know, you can't even call it hardcore TV. No, they label it as such because it's part of the the evolution of ECW. Right. But it is not, there's nothing hardcore about this it. This apparently was the first episode that they scored the deal with like the Philly Sports Network mm-hmm. back in 1993. Three. Three. This episode aired April 6th, 1993. I love watching this stuff because it's such a nostalgia trip. I always think about what was young Steve here doing? What was he doing um, back? April 6th, 1993. April 6th, 1993. I wonder what I was doing back then. See what happened on April 6th, 1993. <laughs> Again, we have to pad this episode. Well, you brought up the idea. Lot happens here. Let's see here. Uh, April of '93. So uh, I was a- Snow's Informer was a was a hit. Why did I know that? I was just humming that in my head. Um, the I, Client by John Grisham. Was I was about to book. graduate my sophomore year of high school. You were about to graduate your junior year of high school. Well, complete. Yes. Right. And then the next year is when we met. So this is literally, you know, this predates. This is about five months before we even met. Because remember, I was in your, I was in physics class. You're you, really stretching the pen. You were a out. senior, and I was a junior because I am smart, er, than you. But then I got an A in calculus, and you had a thirty-two. You, yeah. What's lower than an F? Anyways, uh, let's talk about ECW. This is this is no different than any Todd Gordon at the helm of ECW. This is pre Paul Heyman. Yeah. Pre Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA title. Um, that it, happened about a year later. It happened about a year later. It wasn't, and, and it wasn't even until a little while after that that they started calling it Extreme Championship Wrestling. The 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 change from Eastern Championship Wrestling to Extreme Championship Wrestling was a slower one than I remember. I mean, there yeah. was there was a, a, a you know a line of there was a delineated time when it went from Eastern to to East to e- Extreme. Yeah, but the extreme stuff started well before it turned to extreme championship wrestling. Yeah. Like it was still Eastern Championship Wrestling and they were doing extreme stuff there. But that wasn't during this show because the Sandman was a surfer. 
<laughs> and he was doing wrestling moves. Yeah. It happened well after this. And I say well after, I mean probably like six months because, again, it wasn't long after Paul Heyman showed up that the the, the big changes happened. I mean, he, yeah. he, he showed up and he started making you know changes pretty quickly. It was August of next year that Shane would, would redub the NWA title, the Extreme mm-hmm. Championship Wrestling Champ- or yeah. title. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will look and see when Heyman joined ECW. You continue. Well, okay, so when Shane Douglas threw that down... Did he say extreme? I believe so. I forget if he said that during that promo of his. If he actually said yeah, he extreme. Did. He, he did. did? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Looks like uh, just a matter of months after this, uh, uh, Paul Heyman was put in charge of creative. Okay. Okay. September and they maybe. Started, yeah. They started doing the extreme stuff. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, that's just background. At this time, ECW, Eastern Championship Wrestling, was your absolute Run of the mill. It was your run. You're looking at his promo right now, aren't you? Okay, he doesn't say. He just says ECW. Sorry. Yeah, it was still Eastern at the time. Because I looked it up and I was like, wait a second. Didn't he say extreme? And and, I, and, and it didn't turn into extreme championship wrestling until a little bit after that. Um, well, I thought he just used the word extreme in the promo. It was your run of the mill indie promotion it was in, from the it was early like 90s. It a, a high school gymnasium. It was in a high school gymnasium. No, college. It was at a college. There was no actual branding. No. Their uh, show logo for ECW was the most basic uh, 3D rendering of the letters ECW in the most basic of fonts. Hel- Helvetica, maybe? Maybe. I don't, whatever, or Ariel. whatever was yeah. the default one we opened up the program. That, that's exactly what it was. Um, they seemed, everybody there seemed very, I'll put it this way. The wrestlers and commentary seem very happy to have some sort of TV deal, although I can't imagine it paid all that much. Um, and the wrestlers, with the exception of Jimmy uh, Snuka and Terry Funk, who didn't wrestle, he was commentating, and he was sort of he was uh, he was doing a lot of stuff. He was well, commentating, he was interviewing, and interviewing. Yeah, yeah, he was milling about. Eventually, would be a wrestler. Th- this entire thing was a lot of milling about. There were while things were happening in the ring, you look you see in the background near the entrance to the gymnasium, people just milling about. Yeah. Like not paying it to like if you could go back in time and say, Yeah, I was at the first episode ever of ECW television. Really? What match you see? I don't know. I was hanging out by the vending machine. I was in line getting nachos. It was so boring. <laughs> like yeah. I, I ran into Terry Funk. I think the most interesting aspect of this whole production was a video package. Of the Sandman. Yeah, it as was, a surfer. Yeah, as a surfer. So I didn't even know that he was number one. He was their heavyweight champion at the time as surfer gimmick. Yeah, he had the full, he had the, like the body glove wetsuit. He, had, yeah. he came out with a surfboard. Yeah. He was doing wrestling moves. Well, hold on. Hold on. As best he could. He was doing very slow. He still was not a terrific wrestler. No. He, he never showed any growth. I think Sandman just entered in as as wrestler as he was yes. and never ever improved and that's okay we didn't need him to improve because he drank a lot of beer and he smoked a lot of cigarettes and yeah. he was very violent he could yeah. do violence very well yes. but at this time he was just surfer guy um so we open up go let's let's go ahead and start with the, yeah we uh, open up with the up. uh the ecw commentary team stevie wonderful which again i i looked him up couldn't really find whatever happened to that guy and jay sully again don't really know much. The commentary team, they, they were not very good. No, the funny thing about Jay Sully is on his lower third, when he was introduced, <laughs> was spelled one way, but the end credits was spelled a different way. <laughs> Maybe one was the screen name and the other one, his, like what uh, was spelled different about it? Well, uh, he, uh, on his lower th- two? No, on the lower third, it, was, it ended with an I, okay. and then in the end credits, it ended with a Y. With a Y. The disconnect there, some miscommunication. Yeah, um, so they talked for a bit. In walks Todd Gordon, mm-hmm. the uh, owner, I believe, at the time of ECW. So all I can see here about Stevie Wonderful, again, he wasn't very good at commentary. He was a wrestler of some sort because at ECW Super Summer Sizzler in June of 93, him and Sal Belomo, who we'll see later, uh, went in a six-person six tag match. So it was him, Sal Belomo, and Super Destroyer 1 versus Hunter Q. Robbins III, who looked like the super... He was the manager of the Super Destroyers. Yeah. And Sir Jonathan Hotbody, we saw him, and Sir Richard Michaels. Didn't, I don't remember Who's him. Sir Richard Michaels? Click on his name. We're just going down a rabbit hole right now, man. His various ring names are uh, Bill Pierce, Chris Comet, that sounds familiar, and Chris Michaels. That sounds like a kayfabe corner name. <laughs> so uh, they're introducing the show. Todd Gordon says... 
We're going to start the uh, tournament for the television title this morning. He's yeah. holding said title. Um, in walks Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Yeah, yeah, we knew him. Yeah, who was one of the bookers, I think, at the time mm-hmm. in ECW. Um, and then we were joined by a legend yeah. in the wrestling world, Terry, Terry Funk, Funk. in his new gimmick as Car Salesman. Yeah. Because he came across as this was not... This was not, oh, my God, it's extreme. Just Terry two Funk. years later, he was blowing up uh, Cactus Jack in Japan. Yeah, he uh, he got started in his, now they, 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 they refer to him as the king of the Texas death match. Yeah. He claims to have basically invented that. And then Onita came over here, I think, and saw what they were doing and took it back to Japan with him. I thought Onita went to Memphis and saw it there. Okay, Memphis maybe. was involved in some respect. Either okay, someone in yeah, Texas yeah, yeah. got it from Memphis okay. or Onita went to Memphis. Okay, it was some, some combination of that. Um, but this was, I think, it was it was before Terry realized that he needed to adapt to this extreme thing, yeah, um, to to stay relevant because he wanted to keep wrestling, which he obviously did, and I think is still doing it today. Yeah. Um, yeah so Memphis. it was a, it was a very what's the name uh, congenial yeah. Terry Funk. He had on a sports coat and a tucked uh, in dress yeah, shirt. Yeah, dress shirt tucked in, no tie. Right. Um, uh, uh, jeans, I believe. Yeah. But with, considering he had the sports jacket. It classed him up. Now, in a in a, in a bit of foreshadowing for, and he uh, looked he looked like between this and when he was doing the hardcore stuff in Japan, he had aged about ten years. Yeah, but then after he started doing the hardcore stuff, like two years later, a year later, um, and today he looked the exact same. Yeah. So he aged about fifteen years and the then stopped three years in the span of three years and then stopped for the next twenty. Yeah, pretty much. So not sure how that happens. Um, so yeah, Terry Funk was there and he just looked like he was there simply to have a good time. Yeah. This seemed like the kind of thing he's like, I just want to help these guys get their foot going on the road. Terry. Terry. <laughs> he had already made all his money off of his, uh, Japanese yeah. pop album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, Terry Funk was there to, to liven things up. He didn't really help on commentary though. Terry was never really great. Which is interesting because he's such a good promo guy. I know he's an amazing promo guy, but I think that's just because he's such an amazing heel. Yeah. And you really need to be in the moment, fiery passion. That was Terry Funk promos. Yeah, but also I guess with promos, granted, not scripted, but it's you can kind of imaginative too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you could think about it in advance and, and you know kind of write some stuff on your own and keep them in, keep those lines in your head and I go would, from there. Yeah, I, I mean the only other time I've seen him do promo was promo work was I think at WCW like later on a WCW pay per view, like early '90s I think, and he was again very congenial. Yeah. And I, maybe just that didn't work for him. Maybe being, you know, good guy Terry. Terry! Terry! Uh, didn't work for him. Maybe he just needed to be Madman Terry. Could be. Terry! Let's move on to the first match, which saw the Super Destroyers. Yeah, they were... Super Destroyer so, yeah. number one and number two. It's kind of like the Authors of Pain, but uh, a million times worse. It was like garage sale Authors of Pain. Yeah, and they <laughs> took on the Hell Riders. It was HD Rider and EZ Rider. In, in there, <laughs> I can tell you, there's nothing high definition about this broadcast. Oh, no, there wasn't. Do you remember, dude? Do you remember American Movie? Yeah. Okay. One Coven. of those. <laughs> Coven. It's, Coven. Nah, Coven sounds like oven, man. It's Coven. <laughs> um, uh, very few people are probably marking out right now. Um, but one of the Hell Riders looked like Mike Shank. Mm-hmm. Looked dead on like Mike. I was like, is that Mike Shank? Did, did I not know that he had a career as Hell Rider? Yeah, I guess not. HD or J, what is it? Easy. Easy. Easy Rider, HD. that makes sense. I don't get HD Rider. What's that reference? Again, foreshadowing the dawn of high definition. I guess so. I have no idea. Um, so anyways. Uh, Harley Davidson. Harley. Oh, yeah. There we go. We got an intern. We actually today. have a studio audience we today. We have a studio <laughs> audience today. Anyways. Um, so anyway, Super Destroyers end up winning this match with like a... Hey, it was a flipping senton. Yeah, it was. It was I cool. was actually really impressed. For a man of that size to pull off <laughs> such a maneuver. And in 1993. I know. That sort of innovation. <laughs> it really was. Because it's funny because commentary was so bad. They didn't even know like the, the word senton existed, I think. Because they were just like, oh, look at that. Sort of flipping thing there. <laughs> That's worse than Vince saying, oh, what a maneuver. I know. Exactly. You know, at least with Vince, like, oh, wow. That was crazy. You know. What just say a that. maneuver. If you don't know, just be amazed. Um, so after the match, Terry Funk uh, takes like three steps to the ringside area <laughs> and interviews Hunter Q. Robinson the third, the manager of the Super Destroyers. Is there an age limit for being a manager? Because I feel like this guy was about 12 years too young. He, he looked like a 12-year-old. 
He was, he, but he was yelling a lot. He was like, you respect my name is Mr. Hunter Q. Robinson III. And Terry said, okay, Mr. Hunter Q. Robin the third. He said turd. He called him turd. He did call him a turd. And the, anybody who was actually paying attention started to chuckle a little bit. It didn't get much of a reaction because I don't think people were paying attention. Nope, they were worried about getting some nachos. There's a good chance that Mike was going just directly to the camera yeah. and not to like the PA. So anybody who was actually sitting <laughs> in that particular part of the ringside yeah. area would actually hear it. Yeah, exactly. I have a feeling that Terry Funk speaks softly. Yeah. yeah. He had to be within whisper voice. Uh, yes. Yeah, whisper voice. Next, let's talk about this awesome, incredible uh, uh, Sandman video package that showed off the latest in video editing technology. Feature length. This was long. It was at least five minutes. A little too long. Now, when we say it was edited, that that's using the word the, the term loosely. Well, like it's, they well, needed to edit it down. Here's the thing: bit. we're so used to being able to do stuff like that in about oh, twenty-five minutes. Moments. <laughs> it takes moments to, our, to do that. Our non-linear editing software oh, here, great. like your Final Cut Pro, yeah, like sure. your Adobe Premiere. They didn't have that back then, no. I'm sure, at the TV production fit least. That was all linear editing, yeah. tape to tape. Yeah. You had multiple tape decks. You put yeah. tapes in there. You all <laughs> record bits of video down to a, a record head. You got a panel, the board Pick here with up, some buttons. Stuff it into the thing. Some buttons, <laughs> some levers to pull for transitions. Yeah. That stuff takes time. I've been in one of those rooms. It's laborious. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Well, you know what? They should have cut it down a little bit. But he was their heavyweight champion. Which is weird. I, I just appreciate it. He was a surfer. I swear there were, you know, that was weird. I, and it's in Philly. <laughs> I mean, maybe the maybe the waves in Philly are great. It's not it's not next to the ocean. Yeah, I, I, I'm I not huge on geography. I but believe I, you have to drive through New Jersey to get the ocean. Almost positive that Philly is landlocked. There's a river that goes by it. But not a lot I think of waves. the Delaware River. I don't think, can you surf in a river? Well, I mean, if you're expecting you can, waves, no. Can, okay, there you go then. You can paddle in a river. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, this, he's not a kayaker. No, that would probably be more appropriate. I would think so. I have a feeling the same man probably never surfed in his life. That would not surprise me. Anyways. Anyways, although, Jeff Jarrett, uh, I think, made an appearance in this uh, video package. Oh, yeah, because it looked like Sandman had gone to Memphis. Oh, I think they – did they bill him from Nashville? Where did they bill him from? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, uh, Lawler and Jeff Jarrett made appearances in his yeah. video package. It was just like a highlight reel. But I swear, there were, there were two moments when – uh, like, I don't know, uh, 25% into the promo, it cut to a, uh, a close-up of him delivering a promo. There was no voice. He didn't, you didn't hear what he was music saying. music track or the whole thing. It was just to get a look at what his face was like. <laughs> and then, like, about a minute later, they went to the same shot, but it was the, the video was solarized. You know, the yeah, solarized yeah, 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 filter? Yeah, yeah. So they, they messed around with it. Yeah, they pressed the buttons. Thinking that maybe that would trick us into thinking it was a new shot. But I am not. Well, tripped. there was that one shot where uh, he climbs the turnbuckle to pose. Yeah. They freeze frame it. Yeah. They dissolve out of it into yeah. another shot, and they go back to the freeze frame. Right. <laughs> so they knew how to solarize. They knew how to yeah. freeze frame. They knew how to mat. There yeah. was one time. It was when an Irish shot. There was an Irish shot. It was all white except an Irish shot on his head, and then it went back out. It disappeared. Yeah. So they knew how to do that as well. It was all on the board. There's buttons for all that. Yeah, probably. You know how on the Death Star where they're shooting the laser off? It's like that, huh? And then there's that lever you pull. There's levers? Yeah. Yeah. All right. When did you experience My that? very first job out of college. Wow. Interesting. That's We're old. Where was that? Uh, in L.A. Oh. Thank you for that. Um, anyways, moving on. I know where it was. Was it a TV facility? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Anyways, moving on. Uh, next up, we have. I don't really. I just. I didn't he, know. He actually, we've known him for twenty years. He knows nothing about my employment history before we started working together. I'll bleed this out. It's the stars, right? Uh, not directly. Okay. All right. I'm probably not going to bleep that out. Uh, the Eden. Oh, tonight. But I could say was, we we edited stuff for Stars Movie News. It's not like it's a secret. Tonight featured. Why you're being elliptical about things? Uh, no, because you won't say who you worked for. I was just trying to be silly. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I can never tell with you. I've known you for 20 years. ECW's TV title tournament began on this night. Yes. Didn't end, though. No, that was right. episode three. I looked into it. Episode three, it ended. Uh, so it was literally, I would say, seven jobbers and Jimmy Snuka. Correct. Oh, one of the jobbers. Wasn't one of the jobbers? No, one of the jobbers was not Eddie Gilbert. Yeah. Was he? Yeah, Eddie Gilbert was in the tournament. But then Eddie Gilbert was managing Snuka. So I'm assuming he did the job for Snuka. Potentially. For no, like no reason. Yeah. Or I'm, maybe, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Did they go to the finals together? I'm pretty sure Eddie Gilbert was in the was in the brackets. Maybe they just wanted to set it up so. Yeah, I thought he was too. Uh, it was an all hot stuff international final. 
And that's the thing. So he he announced. Oh wait, we'll we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. I want to talk about Hot Stuff International and the and the vast influence it's had on today's product. Oh yeah, I'm curious to hear that myself. ECW TV title tournament uh, round one, match one, Tommy Cairo versus Wild Man Salvador Belomo. Yeah, who was managed by the Cosmic Commander. <laughs> yeah, this was bad. Oh, it was so bad. Tommy Cairo, number one. The great the thing I love about Tommy Cairo. Is that he has his leather jacket on at first, right? This is entrance attire, and he looks like from from his superficial appearance on the outside, he looks like he might be kind of a stud. Yeah. Okay. He looks like he's in shape. He took that jacket off. Boy, he liked his beer. He had a big old belly on him. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that was great. Because it's like you don't expect that. To happen. All of a sudden, he's in the match. I'm like, oh my god, the guy's like got good cut arms, like yeah. big arms. But then, man. Those Philly cheesesteaks or something else, well, man. I they'll mean, get you. Ch- uh, Johnny Hotbody was an ECW competitor, and he was missing a lot of hair from back here. Yeah, but his body was good. He's not saying Johnny has a lot of hair. <laughs> That'd be a good name, though. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, great hair, dude. No, it was Johnny Hotbody. Don't look up here. Well, man, the body, shaved, the shaved body it. is the whole thing. No, from the neck down, it's just body. Well, that'd be Johnny Hot Torso then. <laughs> well. The torso plus legs and bollocks and feet and hands and arms. That's your body, man. <laughs> but your head's included When in your they body. say they separate your head. From, oh, okay. There you go. Um, what? No, I was going to say, you know, like when there's like a decapitation, they say yeah. they separate his head from his body. So his yeah, head was think, part I of his body. I think body. the inference is head from the rest of the body. Right. Your whole person is your body. No, that's your person. That's your human being. Yeah, your body. It's the whole thing. No, it's not. But the body is here. It, okay. Okay. A body shot in, in, in boxing. This is differentiated from a headshot. Yes, thank you. It's a because he shot you. But if he hits someone if he hits someone on the bollocks, it's not a bollock. It's not a head it's not a body shot. That's a low blow. If he hits someone in the thigh, they don't call it a body shot. Why don't they just call it a torso shot then? Because you know, a body shot rolls off the tongue better. Maybe. Uh, so this match was garbage because most of the matches were garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Who went over? Uh, Tommy Cairo? Yeah, it went by count out. Yeah. Because both of them are undefeated. Neither of them had been pinned yet. Oh, And so to protect, okay. protect both competitors, Tommy Cairo went by count out. And is this when Johnny Hotbody with the attacks. bald spot? Attacks. See, he, he comes in and attacks. Johnny bald spot. Seemingly attacks uh, uh, Sal yeah. Belomo. Sal Belomo. And he's That's what an caused. name. He causes the, the count out. Yeah. And then afterwards, Johnny Hotbody attacks Tommy Cairo. Right, 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 right. Um, so after that, we had uh, Tony Hitman Stetson. Hold on, is he? The, he was Tony the Hitman Stetson. Yeah, this was 1993. Gimmick infringement. There had already been a well-established Hitman by the name of Bret Hart, one who claims to be the greatest there ever was, the greatest there ever will be, and is, is currently now. Is, Until I'm such a huge Bret Hart fan, I, I know his catchphrase by heart we're huge Bret Hart we love Bret Hart so he took on the rock and rebel the rock and rebel who was apparently the number one contender for the ECW title so at some point he and Sandman had a match yeah I know but he didn't win because he was never I looked him up he was never oh I like this though he's billed from anywhere he damn well pleases that's good that's my new favorite thing Uh, also one of his other his only other ring name was the dark ninja (laughs) That sounds like something I was like when I was like 10 years old and I was fascinated with ninjas and presidents. Did you ever have any of the magazines? I wanted to be the, president uh, ninja or the, president of the ninjas. The ninja magazines? Yeah, I did. Those they were, were cool. amazing. Those they were, were awesome. great. You can go to the back and you can buy stuff. Yeah, I never did though. I never did either. Um, Rock and Rebel is like the epitome of early 90s wrestler. He's got yeah. the awful mullet. Oh, yeah. Lame gimmick. Well, both the guys in this match were. Yeah. Um, just bad. Anyways, Rock and Rebel pins... Um, Tony Hitman Stetson um, with his feet on the ropes. He cheated to win. Rock and Rebel was, so after leaving ECW, had a brief stint in WCW and numerous dark matches with the WWF. Wow, dark matches in 1995 WWF. How low can you sink? I know. Like like most of the matches in the WWF in 1995 were of dark, dark match quality. Were of like <laughs> sub-dark match quality. I know. So who was he fighting? So anyways, after the match, Jay Sully interviews with Rock and Rebel. Yeah. I don't remember much about this interview. No, me neither. But I do remember that uh, they both had like crazy mullets going on. Oh yeah, they were both just, Rock and Rebels mullet was next they were level. Very early nineties. He I mean, might have really he might have been 80s. an Eastern Championship Wrestling, but he had a WWF quality mullet on him. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, next up, we had I'm just looking at here. Oh, a Jimmy, Jimmy Snuka, Snuka interview, interview where he uh, turned heel. Um, you know, there was a line that somebody doled out. I don't. I, maybe it was Funk. 
I forget who, but they said something like, there's something sinister in Jimmy Snuka's eyes. And I was thinking, like, yeah, he killed a person like 13 years earlier or 10 years earlier to this. You know, that sinister look's been there a little while. So anyways, he aligns himself with the uh, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Yeah. Jimmy Snuka is the newest member of Hot Stuff International. You seem to have some prepared material about Hot Stuff International. Steve, will you please share? Well, you know, obviously, this is what the WWE has looked to when uh, when presenting the world with Titus Worldwide. It's oh, the same thing. Hot a, Stuff International, it's a brand. Huh? It's Titus a Brand Worldwide. Se. Are you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm fascinated with this Eddie Gilbert Hot Stuff International. I want to know who else, what other prospects did he sign to Hot Stuff International? And I don't know the answer to that. All, uh, Eddie Gilbert was in ECW for a while, though, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought he was the Booker Man. He was the Booker Man. I'm pretty sure. We'll carry on. Hot stuff and Hyatt International. Oh, look at oh my oh, gosh! Wow. Look at hot the... stuff and Hyatt. Well, that's Sting. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you, this is this is this was the forerunner to Titus Worldwide. This is what they think and that's, it can that's Eddie be. Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert, Sting. Who else is, is that? Rick Steiner. It looks like him. It looks like Rick Steiner, doesn't it? Blade Runner Basher. That's Sting. Yeah, that's Sting. Who is that? It looks like Rick Steiner, but he looks too old to be Rick Steiner back then. I just want to have a list of members. Oh, Rick Steiner's listed here. <laughs> then that's him. Yeah, Rick Steiner in 87. Look at that. This is all UWF. Eddie Gilbert, Sting. Oh, uh, John Tatum and Jack Victory. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Eddie Gilbert, Rick Steiner, and Sting, Hyatt. and Missy Hyatt. Okay. That seemed to be the, the first version of... Who are all, can we pick all those people out? So that's there? Eddie Gilbert. That's Rick Steiner. There's that's Missy Sting, Hyatt. That's Sting. Missy Hyatt. So one is... That's, uh, that's uh, one of the other nature, nature Boys, isn't it? Is that Buddy Landell? That's yeah, not Buddy Landell. That's not Buddy Landell. Who else was in it? Uh... Mm. Stables. Oh, here we go. Wait. Hot Stuff International... This can't. That's not right. This must uh, okay, be. so according... Wait, what? According to this... This is the ECW version. The IC, okay, the ECW version was Dark Patriot, Don Morocco, Eddie Gilbert, Jimmy Snuka, and Paul Heyman. So I guess that they kept that around. So you want, we want UWF. <laughs> you want the UWF version? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. I got it. Okay. Let's see who was in it. Eddie Gilbert, Jack Victory, John Tatum, Missy Hyatt, Rick Steiner, and Sting. There you go. There you go. Maybe then, then they broke up over Missy Hyatt. Could be. Well, Sting, of course, went on to uh, WCW. Great success there, <laughs> as did Rick Steiner. <laughs> yes. In case you hadn't heard Sting correct. before. <laughs> That's correct. Sting did, in fact, go to WCW. In case you guys didn't know that one. Little known uh, facts about this Sting wrestler. Yeah. He went to WCW. He's a Hall of Famer now. Yeah. <laughs> he wrestled a guy named Triple H. Yeah. Not too long ago. Um, so that led to uh, the final match of the TV title tournament of this episode of that episode jimmy snooker versus larry winters who is the most normal looking guy he was tony stetson's tag team partner who's tony stetson the hitman yeah they, they talking were about the hitman tony yeah okay they were i'm sorry you didn't say tony the hitman star. stetson so i got confused there and they are the number one or were the number one contenders for the tag team titles so okay. at some point down the line they face super destroyers for those ecw tag team titles wow anyway snooker wins with a top rope splash not a huge surprise. <laughs> yeah. I could probably if we were doing predictions for this, we could. Yeah, that's what we should do. We should do not look up who won, who wins and going uh, in going to see the card. We just see the card and then we do predictions. Snook is in a match. He wins by top rope splash. <laughs> Wait, is he fighting Larry Winters? The Larry Winters? Ooh. No, ECW's Larry Winters. Oh, oh okay, well, okay. Snook it by top rope splash. Top Winter. rope splash is gonna happen. So after this, this see, this seemed like the main event. Snooka versus Larry could, Winters. And yeah, I mean Snooka. Given that Snooka is the only no, like the only recognizable wrestler who isn't hot stuff, who is like leading a stable, and uh, and Terry Funk, then yeah, he was going to go over in the main event. And yet there was another match after this. There was just somebody <laughs> milling about in the ring, and then Sal Blomo comes in and beats him up. Just starts beating the crap out Never of him. Never found out who the other guy was. <laughs> Still have no idea. Yeah. And then Sal apparently was so angry about losing via countout earlier that he had to go in and pin somebody. Well, that might have been a shoot. <laughs> it could have been. We can't, we can't dismiss the possibility. That might have been a shoot. That's a good point. That might have been a ring crew guy that Sal Belomo just wanted to, you know, take He was on. in ring gear. Um, he was in ring gear? Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes after the show is over, 
the ring crew, they'll let them bounce around the ring a there little bit. There's still people in the audience. Uh, well, you know, uh, it's 1993. You're running a bad joke into the ground. You should just stop. It's while not you're a ahead. joke. I'm speculating. You don't know. No, there's you don't a know what's going in the on ring. Here. There is a match. Just saying. Impromptu ring boy thing. All right, let's talk about next week. All right. Do you have anything else to say about ECW Harker TV episode one? Uh, no. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed we didn't do Nitro. I'm going to put well, that on the Well, you can offer it up week. next week. Next week, I'm going to do the first, second, and third episodes of WCW Just to Nitro. Say that. This is what I'm doing this week. Are you ready? Yeah. So I was I, in like the late 90s, early 2000s. I was fortunate enough to go to my first wrestling shows for each of the three major promotions WWF at the time. WCW and ECW. Okay. So I'm putting up uh, for vote those three shows. Okay. The first, Raw from Davis, California, January 26, 1998. Hold on. Are any of these three hours long? Nitro might be. Okay. I think Heat Wave is too. Okay. Second. So my vote is for Raw. Second. This is interesting, Raw, because this is after the Royal Rumble. Number one, I think, wasn't I at that Nitro with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, HBK was after his back injury. Oh. So it's an interesting show. I started watching it not that long ago. Uh, first, or the Nitro is... So this is coming off of the casket match. Yes, okay. where HPK got hurt. Uh, the Nitro is from February 23rd, 1998 in Sacramento, California. The debut of uh, White Thunder Scott Steiner, I believe, right? Yeah. Well, they, that lasted one episode, and then he was Big Papa Pump soon after that. And then lastly, um, as far as I know, ECW's only... The original version of ECW's only appearance on the West Coast... Um, from Los Angeles, California, Heat Wave 2000. Now, do we know if the uh, WWE Network version of this has the XPW wannabe invasion? Yeah. I don't know. Wow. We'll find out. I kind of want to do that one. Part of me wants to do that and see if, because we were up in the balcony. We were yeah, like yeah, up yeah, in the yeah. second level. So you're not going to see us there. No, we weren't. We're in, the, we're in the lower level, I think. Were we? I think we we're just way in the back of the lower level. Oh, that could be. Where was that? That, that was, was at the Olympic Art Tour. The Olympic, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same like, place oh, we did the XPW show where we saw a guy building, burned yeah. to death. Same place, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Boy, my memory is shot. Yep. And I didn't even do drugs back then. No. I didn't start that you until I was like in my late 30s. You don't even do them now. So, here we go. The winner this week, next week, is ECW Heat Wave 2000. This is after everybody good from ECW had already left. <laughs> Except for Tommy Dreamer. I think, wasn't RVD there too? Maybe no, he was not. gone, I think. Oh, was he? I think so. Oh, Maybe he's still around, I don't remember. If so, then RVD was still there. But yeah. this is after pretty much everybody left. Anyways, you have your homework. Go watch, and uh, this time next week, we'll join you again. Yes. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>